Konnichiwa. Good morning. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person for such a fascinating event. The agenda is packed with exciting innovation in prevention and care, so I'm very sorry not to be there. I am, however, keeping up to date online, and thanks to the wonders of technology, will be able to catch up on everything I missed. The theme of innovation in care and prevention is one that I feel hugely passionate about. Having cared for my own mother, who lived with Alzheimer's disease for 18 years, the potential of good care to improve the life of someone with the condition is enormous. So that is why the incredible innovation in Japan and elsewhere to bring care to the home using technology and cutting edge techniques is so exciting. I am particularly encouraged by the potential of iPad and computer technology to allow remote care and connectedness. I found with my mother that having someone there able to provide support and reassurance was essential to her well-being, allowing loved ones and carers to connect at the click of a switch opens up huge opportunities. While I am full of encouragement for all of these ideas, we must never forget that the very best care should be available to all, no matter what their circumstances or background. There is currently too much variation, both within countries and between them. We on the World Dementia Council are looking at how that can be evened out, as well as making sure that the very best ideas and techniques are shared globally, so that best practice is available around the world. As I found earlier today, meeting people at the Dementia Ward at the Royal Hospital Chelsea in London, it is by concentrating on the smallest details that can make all the difference to how someone feels. There are personalised front doors for each patient, with a remembrance box outside each one containing medals and other special mementos. There is also a garden and a potting shed, where patients have their own space for doing familiar tasks. Every day, carers like these devote themselves to improving the lives of others, and I think we don't often enough stop and recognize that. We also need to remember how it feels for people living with dementia and to make sure the whole of our societies are as supportive as possible, not stigmatizing those they can't empathize with. You have to see through that diagnosis of dementia. You have to see the person, what they were, what they've become, and what we can enable them to do. What can they do rather than what can't they do? Thanks to your initiative in Japan regarding dementia awareness, the UK founded the Dementia Friends program. There are now over 500,000 dementia friends in the United Kingdom. Canada has also now adopted the program. If this initiative can be spread around the world, imagine the potential in making sure our older communities are supported and understood. I turn now to the steps we can all take to reduce our risk of developing dementia. This is something that I and my colleagues on the World Dementia Council have been looking at in detail, bringing together the emerging evidence about risk factors. As a first step, I would like dementia to be added to the list of diseases and conditions people are less likely to develop by living well and keeping a healthy lifestyle, along with cardiovascular disease, stroke and diabetes. We should embed them in national public health policies and strategies on non-communicable diseases. This is what gives me great hope for future generations. The trajectory of this disease doesn't have to take the path we expect. By working together on all of these areas, we can improve the lives of both those living with dementia today and stopping more people developing it tomorrow. Thank you.